as a pastor, if I could just share this with you as we close. One of my primary concerns as I look around our city, our, in our state, and in our country is how badly generational transfer, especially in the church, has happened and really continues to happen. I think there's two reasons for that. Number one, we've devalued the older generation. My age and older, a lot of times they're devalued. And just know this, that is not a biblical worldview at all. Even in their last moments, elderly fathers and mothers were not seen as has-beens, but as essential in building up and empowering the next generation. They were called on to give and to pray blessings over the generation to come. And the second reason for such awkward generational transitions in the church is the reverse. And that is, we've devalued the younger generation. You know, I have the privilege of uh, being at the University of Tampa, working with their baseball team a lot. And in those chapels, a lot of times, two of the same basic questions will come out. Uh, now, not in large group, but one-on-one. Uh, Pastor JJ, um, could you help us to pray? Like there's some things going on. I don't even know how to talk to God about that. And then the other thing that I get asked a lot is, Can you help, could you help me read the Bible? Like, it's such a big book. I don't even understand where to start. I don't know what to do. And, and, and could you help me with that? And, and a lot of times the older generation will look down and go, oh, how immature. Like how elementary. But isn't that the questions that Jesus' own disciples ask? Like, Lord, would you teach us to pray? God, would you teach us the value of your word and the words that have been before us? You know, those two questions are foundational. And the next generation, I'm convinced they want answers. But a lot of them did not have a mom or a dad of faith. A lot of them didn't have grandparents that were godly. And they're looking for mentors. But do you know how difficult that is? As a younger generation, especially for someone who was not born or raised here, maybe because of the military or their job or maybe their uh, uh, now wife or spouse lives in, and they found themselves in Tampa and they would love a mentor. But you remember, that's awkward. Like just to go up to someone, hey, um, you look pretty godly. Would you mentor me? Like that's a weird thing for them to do. It's kind of like asking someone to be their friend. And that's why, especially in our men's ministry. Uh, I've developed this movement. It's, it's not a ministry, it's a movement where, where you can be invested by someone and you can also invest in someone else. Every single one of us. You need a Paul in your life. You need someone that can hand the baton to you. But then you need a Titus or a Timothy in your life, someone that you can hand the baton off to. So, so you got to receive it but you also have to give it. And guys, we'd love for you. Join the movement. Uh, become a part of the Titus 10. You know, many of you are, are young in your marriage. Um, they did this dance-off last night. Uh, Sharon and I did not win. It wasn't because of our dancing skills. It was we had only been married 31 years. It was like laughable, like you guys get off the stage. Uh, I think a couple had been married a 54 years last night. And so after the dance-off, they asked that couple, hey, would you share some advice with this couple who've only been married for like an hour now? And you know what they did not do? They did not ask the couples who'd been married a year to give advice. They didn't even ask the couples who'd been married five years to give advice. They asked the couples who'd been married the longest, hey, would you give some advice? And some of you have been married a long time. Some of you have been married a short time. And we have a ministry, Pastor David, who led in communion overseas. It's marriage mentors, where you can, can have a couple in our church who will come alongside of you in your marriage, and, and they'll spend time with you. It's not Bible study. It, it's them sharing their life of marriage with you. Sometimes you guys go out to eat, depending on who your mentor is. Uh, but you can go out to eat together, spend time. We have that available for you. Why? Peter needed Cornelius. Paul needed Titus and Timothy and John Mark. I mean, man, even C.S. Lewis needed the Inklings. We need one another. Everyone needs someone in your life that has more stars, more stripes than you have. 
You need someone in your life that's already ran the part of the race that you're just now running. And a church that knows how to trust each generation is a church that knows how to trust in the faithfulness of God that God will keep his promises.